Next, we're going to look at the division of a polynomial by a polynomial. And this means we're going to revisit long division. So let's start with a review of long division with regular numbers and kind of look at the algorithm or the uh, procedure involved in that. Because we're going to use the same basic procedure uh, when we work with polynomials. If we take a number like 2 and we divide it into 594, if we do this longhand, we're first of all going to see how many times we can put 2 into 5. Or in other words, we'll take 5 divided by 2 and we'll take the closest whole number not going over. Uh, that's going to be a 2. And there's some change, but we'll deal with that later. Um, I'll put plus r for your old friend, the remainder. Now, our next step, most people will automatically put the 2 right on top of the 5. I want to go through um, what we're doing for the piece after that. We take the 2 times the 2, and we get 4. That tells us what goes underneath the 5 so that we can then subtract. And we're left with a 1. Then we're going to bring down. This should ring a lot of bells. So we have a 19. And then we sort of repeat the process. Now we're going to put the 2 into the 19, which will happen uh, 9 times, leaving us with 18, 14, and that will go in 7 times. Um, I want to attach a phrase to this first step, first into first. Um, to help, you rem help remind you that what you did was you took the 2 and you put it into the 5. When we work with polynomials, we'll be dealing with the first term in each of our polynomials. So having uh, looked at what you do automatically without thinking, we're going to apply that to polynomials and see how it uh, fits in. And we'll do that to 3x squared plus 11x minus 4. We'll divide that by x plus 4. We're not just going to break this up the way we would have if it were a monomial being divided into the polynomial. Um, what you will notice is that the degree of the numerator is greater than the, the degree of the no denominator. Here we have a degree of 2. And here we have a degree of 1. And that is important. Um, you will also notice that both the dividend and the divisor are written with descending powers, 2, 1, 0, 1, and 0. And I'm going to emphasize that meekness really counts in this method. What we're going to do is we're going to take the divisor and put it out in front of the box. Bottom goes in front. Top goes underneath. We're going to start by dividing first into first. What that means is we'll take, like we did with the 2 and the 5, we'll take the 3x squared, and we'll divide it by the first term in our divisor, the x. And we'll see what we get. We're going to get a 3x. This gives us what goes on top. And I recommend writing out these steps on the side when you first start doing these. Now, we put the 2 on that earlier problem right above the 5. We have to be very careful to put the 3x on top of the 3x squared, or above the 3x squared, so we keep our um, uh, powers in the right order and in the right places. 
Now, what we did was we had, in the long division with the numerical example, we took whatever we put on top and multiplied it by the entire divisor. We'll do that here as well. We take the 3x, we multiply it by the entire divisor, x plus 4. This is an opportunity for us to use the distributive property. And we get 3x squared plus 12x. It was when we multiplied it out before that we got what we subtracted. This is the piece we subtract. And that's our third step. I very highly recommend you use different color pens and that you write this out with parentheses and put the subtraction symbol in front so that you don't drop signs. It's probably one of the most common errors I see is people forgetting um, about their signs. So we're subtracting 3x squared plus 12x. When we subtract, we add the opposite. So take your different color pen and go through and change all your signs. And now you're set. 3x squared minus 3x squared. There's nothing left, and that's our whole goal in this uh, first step is to eliminate this piece. 11x minus 12x, we have a minus x left over. So now we're going to bring down. We'll bring down the next, which is the minus 4. And we'll repeat this process, for which I'll need more paper. I'll try to fit as much of this on the screen as I can. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll shift over to the left a little bit. Now, we're back to first into first, but this time, the firsts we're working with are this x and this negative x here. So we'll take the minus x, and we'll divide it by x, and we get a negative 1. That goes on top, so now we have 3x minus 1, being careful to keep it over our next term, which was the 11x. We take the negative 1, and we multiply it by the entire divisor, so negative 1 times x plus 4, and that gets us a negative x minus 4. Then we're going to subtract. So we'll write that out minus parentheses negative x minus 4. And at this point, it may seem a little redundant to write all these steps out. But do it anyway um, for the practice, because when you get to more complicated problems, you'll really want to write out all these little steps. Again, we're going to add the opposite. So we'll just go through and change every sign. And we are left with, happily, nothing. So we have no remainder. We are done. The answer, then, I just want to rewrite the original statement. Uh, we had 3x squared plus 11x minus 4 divided by x plus 4. And the answer to that problem was 3x minus 1, and there was no remainder. You could check this, and you should, by taking x plus 4 times 3x minus 1 and foiling it, and you should get the 3x squared plus 11x minus 4, and I'll leave that to you to do uh -huh. on your own. Now, it does not always work out this neatly, of course. And what I want to do is walk through a couple of examples that are not quite as neat and tidy and just go through the process with them.